Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock. It's time for another video. And today I'm back with another top 10 list. And today I'm going to be talking about paddle routines. That's right, paddle routines. I'm going to be talking about the 10 best paddle tricks of all time. What is a paddle trick? Well, the idea of a paddle trick is really simple. You have something like a stick. You can show the same side twice while it looks like you don't show the same side. So I, what am I talking about? I'm sure everybody who's watching this video knows what a paddle trick is. There's loads of them. There's hundreds of them. I know there's hundreds of them because I sat through so many different versions of paddle routines while I was making this list. There's some great ones. There's some terrible ones. There's some that are really terribly thought out and there's some that are absolutely brilliant. And I've put together a list of the 10 best paddle tricks of all time. Now, I will be honest with you. I could probably probably make a follow-up list of 10 more amazing paddle tricks of all time because it was very difficult to take out some. In fact, at one point, this was going to be a list of 15. I thought, no, that's going to be too long. We're keeping it to 10. Um, so if you would like to see a follow-up video and you want to see another 10 paddle tricks that are absolutely awesome, please let me know in the comments down below and I will happily do that for you. I've already got the research. I've already worked out what they are. So please tell me down below that you want to see it. But as it stands, these are the 10 best paddle tricks of all time. Buckle up, we're going to go through it, starting with number 10. Okay, so in 10th position, we've got an, uh, a trick that's recently come out in the last six months, and it's called Paddle King by TCC. So what is Paddle King by TCC? Well, basically, it's the old money paddle that TCC have reimagined. Now, if you don't know what this is, the effect is very simple. You bring out a stick and uh, you show it, and it's got nothing on both sides, but you've got elastic bands wrapped around it. And you talk about how it's able to duplicate um, money and then you start to duplicate 10 pences or 20 pences or 50 pences or whatever currency you want to use. It just starts duplicating them over and over and over again and it looks really good. And then you make big money appear. You make like a... Um, a dollar bill appear or a £10 note appear. Then you make another £10 note appear. Then you make a mirror appear. The mirror appears on both sides. Then you make the mirror jump into the other hand. Then it goes back. Now you can draw X's on the paddle if you want to, and you can make the X's jump all over the place. It's a really fun tutorial that's included with the project that goes through so many different ideas. But as you would expect with TCC, the quality is really, really good. And it comes in its own little holder. It fits into your pocket. It sits there. It's ready to go whenever you want to do it you can do it it sits there and it is really great i gotta tell you whenever you bring money into a presentation whenever you start talking about money people's ears prick up right this is no difference uh you you are talking about money you're talking about making money appear you're talking about duplicating money when that money appears when that folding bill appears i've done this a few times now in the real world it gets a great reaction and then when the mirror appears Oh, forget about it. And and the nice thing is at the end, everything's examinable. Now, the one downside is it takes a few seconds to reset. Not that long, but it does take about maybe 20 seconds to reset. But that's really the only negative. A lot of people, they concern themselves with paddles. They worry about paddles. And the reason they worry about them is because they say it looks like nothing on God's green earth. This is a perfect example of something that looks like nothing on God's green earth. But that's okay. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a magician. It's my job. Part of my job is to show people weird and wonderful objects that they haven't seen before. And that's what I want to do with this. With, uh, with this. I want to show, hey, do you know what this is? This is... um duplication device. This is the craziest thing that magicians have invented. We're really good at inventing things, but this is why magicians can make money by magic. Would you like me to show you how it works? Now, immediately, I've got people's attention. It's a great hook. Adults love it. Kids love it. It's the perfect table hopping, strolling piece. I think it's really good. It's why it's 10th place. So in 10th place on my list, I've got Paddle King by TCC, which is their reimagination of the money paddle. Now we're going to go to number nine. In ninth position, we have the number two pencil by Mark Genest. Now, the number two pencil uh, was kind of basically a reimagining of the jumping arrow, the jumping, uh, the incredible jumping arrow. Now, the incredible jumping arrow at one point was on the list, but I scribbled it out, as you can see. Uh, that's how hard it was for me to actually put this list together. I did the incredible jumping arrow for years, and then when I saw number two pencil by Mark Genest, I, I stopped doing it, and I started doing this instead. And, and one of the reasons was 
it, it was just more of a fun routine. Now, it's more organic. Now, I don't think that's a problem. Like I said, with the uh, with the money paddle, I don't think it's a problem that paddles don't look that organic. Uh, and the incredible jumping arrow didn't look that organic. But this, A, it looks more organic, which is great. But B, it just resonated better with the audiences because they can relate to a pencil. Everybody knows what a pencil is. Everyone knows what a number two pencil is. Everyone knows there's a number two on there. When you've got a little black stick with an arrow on, it's not something that people can relate to. And I think half the battle when you're performing close-up magic is getting people to relate to what you're doing. And if you bring it out and you go, hey, I've got a pencil here. Has anyone seen one of these before? Of course you have. Uh, well, this is a number two pencil. A lot of people think that this means number two. It means no two, as in no two. And that's the opening line, by the way. That's what happens right at the very beginning. You've got that little cheesy gag of, no, it doesn't mean number two. It means no two. Boom, like no two. And now the whole idea is the number two vanishes. It comes back. It vanishes. It comes back. It vanishes again. It comes back. It goes down the end. It goes back up the other end. It, it just looks amazing. It splits in two. It goes into the middle. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And what Mark Janess did is he did what a lot of paddle routines fail at. He gave the routine a finale. How did he do that? Well, very, very simply, he supplied a second paddle. Uh, he supplied a second pencil. And the second pencil had a stretched out number two. So at the end of the paddle routine, at the end of the number two pencil, you put the pencil away into your pocket and you go, oh, I forgot the big finish. Would you like to see the big finish? Now you take the pencil back out, but you've switched it, right? So now you can show it's still got a no two on both sides, again, with the paddle move. And then you do this, boom, and one of them just ends up getting stretched out across the whole of the pencil. And now you can hand it out for examination, which is just a really strong plus point with this particular routine. So think about it. It's organic. It's a visual. It happens right in front of the spectator's eyes. In many cases, it happens in their hands. It's got a really strong finale. You put it away in your pocket and it's reset and everyone can relate to the object that you're using. It is a great paddle routine. It really is. If you haven't gone and checked out number two pencil, please do so because it's, it's kind of, you know, um, any time we can manipulate something that people think can't be manipulated, it becomes stronger. And that was the whole point behind my routine Keymaster. With Keymaster, you're moving the hole in a, in, a, in, a, in a key down to the stem of the key, right? That's a really strong moment. You're moving the hole down to the stem of the key. I mean, what? Come again? You're moving the hole down to the stem of the key? People know that the hole doesn't move, right? The hole shouldn't move, and yet you're moving it down to the stem of the key? Come again? Well, with this, you're doing basically the same thing, right? You're, you're moving a, a number two, which people know is printed on that on that pencil, and you're moving it. It really is very, very strong. It really is. Uh, which is why it's in ninth place. So there you go. That's the number two pencil in ninth place. We're going to move on now with eighth place. Uh, we're going to look at a Richard Sanders trick. So this is eighth place, and it is Turbo Stick by Richard Sanders, and I believe Leo Smesters had the original idea for this and uh, Richard Sanders um, bought the rights or something. I'm not too sure, but it's Leo Smesters and Richard Sanders. Now, it, it, this concept has been done before, but the beautiful thing about this is it looks like a mini whiteboard, right? So it looks like a mini whiteboard um, and you can introduce it as a mini whiteboard. You can hand it out for examination. You take a whiteboard pen and you start drawing X's on this whiteboard. And, uh, and, and, and it becomes like a little bit of a challenge game. Hey, the idea is that you have to follow where the X's are. Can you do that? You can, okay, great. If I rub one away, how many are left? Four, uh, you know, it's kind of, it really is strong. I've performed it numerous times on my channel. Ryland's performed it on his channel. It's a, it's a uh, trick that both myself and Ryland love. Um, and I've performed it for many, 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 many years in the real world. You'll see live performance footage on Magic TV of me doing turbo stick. Uh, it's really strong. Now, some people are negative about it and they say it doesn't look like anything. Uh, and again, I don't think that's an issue, but I actually do bring it out as a mini whiteboard. And I say it very tongue in cheek. I say, hey, have you ever seen one of these before? It's the latest invention for a busy networker. It's called a mini whiteboard. If you're doing business meetings and you haven't got time to set up a, uh, you know, like an actual whiteboard or a flip chart or something like that, just take one of these with you and it's the next best thing. Uh, and I say it very tongue in cheek. It always gets a laugh, especially at corporates, but then it allows 
allows me to go into my presentation. And sometimes, you know, it's just about having fun with props. That's important. Now, as a little side note, I do want to point out another routine called How's That by one of my favorite magicians, Michael J. Fitch. Now, Michael J. Fitch brought out How's That a couple of years ago. I think it's still available. It's very similar to this, but um, Michael had it made out of a cricket bat. And rather than drawing X's, he's drawing circles. Now, the routine is slightly different, uh, but the whole idea is he's talking about it's all a cricket themed presentation and he's drawing little cricket balls on a cricket bat. And he gave it a finale, which is always really important. Now, um, Turbo Stick has a finale in that they rub off the final X. There's nothing on there and then they throw it back on. Um, but this had a slightly different finale, which is the final cricket ball. You pull it off and it turns into a real mini cricket ball and everything's handed out for examination. Very, very cool idea. It really was a very cool idea. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's uh, how's that. You can get that from Michael J. Fitch or you can get Turbo Stick from all good magic dealers. Uh, I think it's become a neo-classic, to be honest, right now, the, the Turbo Stick. It's very, very good. And if you're looking for something that packs small, plays big, instantly resets, is examinable, super visual, and grabs everyone's attention, works for kids, adults, and everybody, works for family events and corporate events and weddings and all points in between, then Turbo Stick is a really good shout. Okay, so now we've got seventh position, and seventh position is No Smoking by Jean-Luc Bert, uh, Bertland. Now, um, what is uh, No Smoking? Well, No Smoking is a really strong trick, and it starts with you bringing out a, um, a lighter, and uh, you talk about how uh, it's a No Smoking lighter, and it's got a No Smoking sign on it on both sides, and you can show it's got a No Smoking uh, sign on both sides. And then you, you proceed to take the No Smoking sign off, and you say, now it's a normal lighter, and now it'll light, and then you throw the No Smoking sign back on, then it comes off, and then it comes on. And you do all this crazy visual stuff with it, and then you proceed to say, well, let me explain how it works. I'm actually using two lighters. And you reach into your pocket, and you say, I've got another lighter here, and I'm just switching the lighters. Now you proceed to do like a color-changing and knife style routine where the no smoking lighter and the smoking lighter are actually changing places again super visual and you can do that in the spectator's hands as well these lighters are so cool to paddle and then for the finale you put one of the lighters into the spectator's hand and they hold on to it you vanish the other lighter and as a big finale when they open up their hand the two lighters have fused together and now you've got a lighter which has got like a uh, an ignition end on both ends it's an impossible object and that's one of the reasons i love this first of all like the number two pencil it follows a very similar pattern it's visual it uses organic items that everybody knows about everybody knows what a lighter is um, and it has that finale that nobody sees coming. With the number two pencil, it was stretching the number two down. With this, it's creating this impossible object. I always love it when we create an impossible object. Again, bringing it back to Keymaster, that's an impossible object because nobody's seen a hole on the stem of a key. Number two pencil, no one's seen a number two stretched down the length of a pencil. This, no one's seen a lighter quite like that. The advantage that this has is it happens in the spectator's hands. So there holding on to the lighter they think it's just a normal lighter and then they open up their hand and you've got that sponge balls moment their lighter's gone your lighter's gone it's now in their hand they can feel only one they know that you've not put two in their their hand and when they open it they're fused together the beautiful thing is everything's examinable and at the end you throw the lighter back into your pocket and you're instantly reset the other thing is from a hook line this makes total sense because everybody now the buzz these days is about no smoking and hey People don't smoke anymore. It's disgusting to smoke, right? So you bring out a pen, a, a lighter, and you say, hey, this is a no-smoking lighter. It's designed to help people give up smoking. The idea is this will light, but it won't light a cigarette. How crazy is that? Have you ever seen one of these before? Now, people might believe what you say. They might not believe what you say, but it's a really interesting hook that grabs people's attention. And when you're doing commercial close-up magic, that's half the battle. Uh, this is one of the strongest... Um, uh, uh, paddle tricks that I've ever seen, which is why it's made this list. Now, you can still get it from various different places, but if I were you, I'd beg, borrow, or steal a copy of this because it is a really awesome way. And the tutorial, by the way, is phenomenal with lots and lots of live performances. So there you go. That's no smoking. Let's move on with the next routine. 
Okay, seventh position, we have Baffling Blocks by Eric Leclerc. Baffling Block by Eric Leclerc. So what is Baffling Block? Well, it's basically a reimagination of the hot rod. So what you have here is you have, again, something which is an incredible hook because he's, he's doing a trick with Lego. That's what Baffling Blocks is all about. It's all about Lego. Anytime you can bring Lego into a presentation, I think it's amazing. Everybody knows what Lego is. All the parents know it because their kids have got it. And most adults have got it because building Lego as an adult is a really popular thing to do. Not only that, but they've probably did a, done it ever since they were a kid. I don't think anybody doesn't know what Lego is, right? Everybody knows what Lego is. So then you bring out this little stick that, and you talk about how it's a mini building block. It's a mini, uh, it's a mini Lego building block. It kind of makes sense. And there's two phases to this particular routine. The first phase is you say that you've got this prediction underneath the, uh, underneath the stick and they can pick up these pieces and put them in any order that they want to literally any order that they want and then you show that your prediction at the bottom matches exactly which is strong in its own right but then you've got this second phase where they pick one of the six different colors that they've put into the uh they've put into this little stick themselves and they've made the order they pick a number they pick one of those colors and then boom all of the colours change to that colour. I mean, how strong is that when you think about it? And it is a perfect example. Eric Leclerc is a genius, to be honest. As far as I'm concerned, he's a creative genius, an incredible performer. And he's got an amazing ability to do magic and create magic that works for adults and kids and without looking kiddy. And this is a perfect example, right? Uh, but he's created a wonderful routine here that's got a great hook. It's really interesting. And it's a perfect example of taking a classic of magic that's been around for a long time, in this case, the, the, the hot rod, and really push it in a completely different direction by changing the props, by changing the, um, the, 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 the premise, but keeping the core method of the hot rod the same um this is great if you if you you know like lego this is absolutely something that you should be doing in your act 100 percent. it's very easy to do and it's got that lovely two hit kicker you've got the prediction they think the trick's over and then boom everything changes to the same color so it's called um it's called uh it's called Baffling Blocks. There you go. It's called Baffling Blocks. Uh, you can get it from most magic dealers. It's in stock in most magic dealers. And it's really, really cool. Let's move on. Okay, so in fifth place, you've got a trick that you can still get from time to time. Uh, it's probably less relevant than it was when it first got released, but it still can be justified given the right presentation. And it's an amazing example of uh, the same thing that I was talking about with m number two pencil and no smoking. Now, what number two pencil and no smoking had in common is it was super visual. It used objects that everybody was aware of and everybody knew what those objects were. And it had a really kicker killer finale. Well, what we have here is Flash by Chad Long. And that is exactly the same. It's in exactly the same vein as uh, those other two routines. So when it first came out, everybody was using flash drives. Flash drives were the big thing, right? So what Chad Long had the genius idea to do was to supply two flash drives, but have one of them gimmicked so it was double-sided, which meant um, that you were able to do color-changing pen knife style routines, but with a flash drive. But because the lid comes off the flash drive, you could have the lid change and not this part, or you could have the whole thing change or just part of it change or the main body changes. The, 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 the routine that Chad put together with this was brilliant, but it was totally open to interpretation. And it's an object that everybody was aware of, right? And it's super colorful. A lot of the phases happened in the hands of the spectators. It was examinable at the beginning, but he then had the great idea of making it um, uh, have a kicker ending, have a big finale, just like the number two pencil where you stretch the number two, just like no smoking where you fuse the two lighters together. With this, you've got this big kicker ending of um, uh, the, uh, the flash drive extending out. So at the end, you take the flash drive that they've been using, that they've been holding, and now it's like 20 times bigger. And you just hand it to them and you've created this impossible object that feels like it's happened in the hands of the spectators. It was, at its time, an incredible routine. Now, you don't see many people doing it these days. And the reason is, not many people use flash drives. Now, I still think, and I don't do it, 
But when I was putting this list together, I thought to myself, you know, you could still do that. You absolutely could still do that if you wanted to, because you could talk about, hey, does anybody remember these? Back in the day, we used to use these all the time. These are called flash drives. And if they may maybe young and they don't know what a flash drive was, you could explain it to them. But most people will remember what these things are. I think you could still get away with doing that. Um, but it's a great, you know, it's a great visual routine. It, it fits in your pocket. Pack small, play is big, instantly repeatable, examinable. What's not to love? I mean, that's the best, the best paddle routines, in my opinion, are the ones like that, where you can just literally examine everything at the end and you're instantly repeatable and doesn't take up much pocket space. I mean, there's so much to love about this particular routine. But if you haven't checked out Flash by Chad Long, I really advise you to go and do so because it's got some amazing moments and it's a perfect example of how you can take an age old principle paddles in these case in this case and apply it to something modern and current and making it way better than the sum of its parts anyway with that being said we're going to move on to number four okay so in fourth place this is something that if Ryland was here we'd put it in first place this is called the magical street light by asta now this is kind of flown under people's radar it's still available you can get it from all good magic dealers you can get it from the bad ones as well you can get it from asta so what is the magical street light well basically the idea very simple is that you have a standard classic paddle looking thing and um you've got three covers on it three white covers and um, you show um, that, that one cover has a green dot on both sides, one has a red dot on both sides, and one has a yellow dot on both sides. And then you show that the actual stick that they, they fit over is black on both sides, right? So what you do is you, one at a time, transfer the dots from the covers onto the paddle. And it looks amazing. It really does. They, they, they literally jump from the covers to the paddle. First of all, that one, then the second one, um, and then when you try to do it with the green one, all of the dots go onto the green cover on both sides. There's so many displays. When you watch this for the first time, you kind of think to yourself, how can, how can this work? How can you get so many displays? And it's the fact that you're using covers and you're using a paddle together. It means there's a lot more displays than there would be with a normal paddle. The nice thing about this is it resets instantly, ready to do it again at the next table. It's easy to do. It's super visual. You don't even need to say much. It just works. And, and you could literally do it silently. Ryland put it up recently on Instagram to music and, 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 and it just worked. You don't need to say anything, but if you do say something, it, it, it becomes even better. It's a very, very strong paddle routine. Now, it's very different to the number two pencils and the, the flash flashes of the world because it's not an organic object. But like I said, with Paddle King, it doesn't necessarily have to be an organic object. It can be something that everybody is aware of. 100% it can be something that everyone's aware of. And, uh, and, that's, and that's absolutely fine. And that's what we have here. It is what it is. It is a magic prop. And you're using it to, to show people some really cool visual magic. And if you think about it, if you're a kid's entertainer, you can do a very interesting sort of road safety presentation because you have got the colours that are on uh, traffic lights. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So there you go. That is uh, Ryland's favourite paddle routine. If you go and see him do close up, he will always do that. It's called Magical Street Light by Asta. So we're into the top three now. We're into the top three and in third place. We have Remarkable by Richard Sanders. Now, I've talked about this before on the channel. What is Remarkable by Richard Sanders? It is what I think to be uh, the best Sharpie revelation I've ever seen. So Remarkable, simply put, is uh, a way to reveal two uh, forced cards. So you would force two cards on people. You would then take out a Sharpie marker and you would show it, say, Sharpie on both sides. You'd have the first person think of the card and the Sharpie logo on both sides would change into the name of the first person's card. You put it away and you go, thank you. And you go, oh, hang on, you picked a card as well. You then take the pen back out. You show that it's still got that same card on both sides. You have them pick one of the sides and the, that side changes from the first person's card to the second person's card. So now it has the second person's card on one side, the first person's card on the other side, and you hand it out so they can examine it they can look at it they can touch it they can feel it they can do whatever they want to do um it's great it's uh simple 
Uh, it, it works. It works really, really well. Uh, what's nice and what Richard did, because these Revelation Sharpies have been around before, many, many different people have used Revelation Sharpies over the years. But what's really nice about this one, specifically this one, is that um, uh, because you're using two Sharpies and you're doing a pen switch, um, you can have two freely thought of cards and then the pen is examinable at the beginning and there's no Sharpie logo in place, which is which is great. Um, and I, I'm a big believer, and I've talked about this on the channel before, I'm a big fit believer in filling dead time. And what I mean by that, and one of the big problems that I think a lot of magicians have, is there's a lot of dead time in their performances, like sign a card. They don't say anything and then they give you the pen back and you go, okay, but... And, and I think that we need to fill all of those dead times, all of those moments. We need to fill it up with as much energy as possible. So that's what I use Remarkable for a lot of the time. If I'm doing a card routine where someone signs a card, um, I'll um, what I'll do is I'll I'll have them um, pick a card and then uh, I'll take I'll give them the gimmick sharpie and I'll say they never notice and I'll say sign the card. While they're signing the card, I'll have two other people pick cards and I'll force the two cards on two other people. Say, while well, he's signing that, can you pick a card? Brilliant, remember that card. Can you pick a card? Brilliant, remember that card. Awesome. Um, can you hold the deck? Have you finished with that sharpie? Right. L think of your card. Boom. Was that it? Yes. Amazing. Thank you. Oh, you've got a card. Was that it? Yes. Amazing. Yeah, you can look at that. Anyway, put your card back. And it just, it keeps everything going. It makes everything really exciting and really energetic. And that's why I love Remarkable so much. Because it is, again, it's an impossible object. You're creating an impossible object. Everybody knows what a sharpie should look like. Everybody knows what sharpie should be written on the side of a sharpie. And yet it's not. You're taking an ordinary object that everybody is aware of and you're turning it into something extraordinary. And you're doing it in a very visual way. I love this. It's called uh, Remarkable. It's from Richard Sanders. You can still get it. If you can't find it, there's lots of other Revelation Sharpies. Go check out Alakazam. There's a bunch there. Go check out Penguin Magic. There's a bunch over there. Go check out Steve Rowe. He's got a bunch of different Sharpie type revelations. But my favourite is Remarkable by Richard Sanders. Right, we're almost there. The second best paddle trick of all time. Number two is the colour changing pen knives. And specifically, David Regal's version of the colour changing pen knives. Uh, I've worked with so many colour changing pen knives over the years. I've worked with Joe Mogars, which are brilliant, don't get me wrong. I've worked with a bunch, but ever since I picked up David Regal's colour changing pen knives, I have never been more happy. Um, and it's something that I have always got in my close-up set, and I always have them in my close-up case, and I'm ready to go with them whenever I need to. So what are the colour-changing pen knives? Well, if you've not seen them before, the idea is that you start off by bringing a, uh, a pen knife out, changing it from black to white, black to black, black to white, and it's a little bit like the lighter trick in that you then say, hey, this is how it works, I've got another one in my pocket, I'm switching them, and you're kind of doing this switch thing a whole bunch of times. What makes uh, David Regal so nice is there's a finale and the finale is at the end of the color changing pen knives routine uh, his turn into uh, like a um, uh, a red one one of those um, uh, red pen knives can't remember the brand of them now but it turns into one of those red pen knives there's lots of different ways to finale it Joe Margar had a really nice explosion which was really nice back in the day um, but for me uh, the color changing pen knives that Richard uh, that David Regal bought out are the best. Now, um, I have had people say to me, "Well, color changing pen knives. Nobody carries pen knives around with them anymore." Um, no, I don't think many people do. But there's quite a few ways to justify it. I've seen Chris Congreve justify it, but uh, which is a, a, Chris is an amazing magician, and I've seen him uh, justify it by using a uh, a Bill Malone line. And he goes, hey, I want to show you a Wolverhampton credit card. He's from Wolverhampton, near where I live. And uh, he goes, hey, let me show you a Wolverhampton credit card. And he takes a uh, he takes a pen knife out and he goes, here you go. This is Wolverhampton credit card. Gets a laugh, gets a joke. Uh, it's a Bill Malone line. It works really well. Or you could just say, hey, I got one of these off my dad. My dad bought me this when I was a kid. Um, uh, you know, and uh, because it's the sort of thing that a lot of dads do by their sons. There's a lot of different ways to justify it. Uh, and it does look like an organic object, even if not many people carry pen knives around with them anymore. You know what it looks like. You know what a uh, you know what a pen knife is meant to look like. And this, once again. Uh, is examinable at the end, packs small, plays big, uh, fits in your pocket, takes up no pocket space, and it looks amazing. It's why I love it so much. It's the color changing pen knife, specifically the David Regal version. You can get them from David Regal. 
And here we go, the number one paddle trick of all time, at least in my opinion, the number one best paddle trick of all time is Colour Sticks by Eric Stevens. This was the 2021 or 2020, 21, 20, I can't remember. This was 20. This was the 2020 Magic TV Trick of the Year or Download of the Year or both. I can't remember. Um, Colour Sticks is amazing. Color St so first of all, Eric Stevens is an incredible magician, an incredible creator, uh, he is the Don, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And and what he did with, with the hot rod, the humble hot rod, uh, he took something that everyone had dismissed as like something that you get in a kid's set, and he took it to the entire new level. And then some. There are so many different phases and routines that he has included in the Colour Sticks Act. I do it. Ryland does it. We both love it. It's so amazing. That moment where he zooms in on the colour that they've selected and then zooms out. It's just so super visual. It never fails to get a great reaction. Then you've got all the vanishes and all the reappearances and your hands are being shown empty the whole time. The beautiful thing is you can structure it however you want to. If you want to use sleeving like Eric does, you can. If you don't want to use sleeving and you want to do more sleight of hand approach to it, you can. I, 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 I you know, I, go watch Eric Stevens perform this. Go and look at a full performance of Eric Stevens doing colour sticks. And then come back to me and tell me that isn't one of the best damn tricks you've ever seen. I have people say to me, oh, but it's just a, it's just a hot rod. It's not a hot rod. It's not a hot rod. It's not a hot rod. Telling me that the colour sticks routine is like a hot rod is like telling somebody with a smartphone, the latest smartphone, whether it's Android or Apple, telling somebody with a smartphone that it's a little bit like a Nokia 9210 or something. It's just, it's just not true because your standard hot rod routine is, hey, pick a colour, uh, pick a number, four, one, two, three, four, that one, boom, it's changed, thank you, bye. That's all it was. Eric has taken it and turned it into do a tour to force. First of all, he's got multiple ways of them freely picking a colour. Then once they freely picked a colour, he's got so many moves and slights and sequences before he even goes into splitting them and, and putting them away and having them come back and splitting them again and doing transpositions and making the... Oh, it's just ridiculous ridiculous and it's absolutely incredible i love performing it and i can't understand why more people wouldn't do it it's called color sticks by eric stevens you can get it as a download and it is one of the best damn downloads i've ever seen if you've got a hot rod sitting in your bottom drawer and you've not seen color sticks i guarantee you that if you go and watch color sticks that's going to make you want to learn that hot rod and go and do it for real people so there you go guys that is another video in the back do me a favor let me know what you think in the comments down below do you agree with my list of the top 10 paddle tricks of all time would you like to see another list of 10 more amazing paddle tricks if you would let me know in the comments down below you want to see more videos like this like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below now i'm going to be back again again tomorrow with another video but i want you to do me a favor go ahead and uh you know go ahead and check out the netrix www.thenetrix.com that's www.thenetrix.com go and check it out and see what all the fuss is about i'll tell you right now it's amazing it's why so many people love it we're uh we're doing really well. We're doing really well. And a lot of people love it. And thank you very much for everybody who signed up to the Netflix. I appreciate it. For everyone who signed up to Magic TV, I appreciate that. I really do. I'm going to be back again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.